stand. Do not be I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I greet you all in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I welcome you here this morning, and I rejoice at seeing a full church. My only regret is that it's full for the reason that it is. We would have loved Freddie to be here with us and, and singing and playing, driving that beautiful car. But he is not. And there's nothing we can do to change that. What we can do, and what I hope and pray we will do this morning, is rejoice and give thanks that we had Freddie in our lives, that he gave lives to you, that he gave love to everybody he met. So in sadness, but I pray, mixed with happiness, 
let us remember and give thanks to God for the life of a Christian servant. I remind you that we are here today to remember before God our brother Freddy, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to God our merciful Redeemer and Judge, to commit his body to be cremated, and to comfort each other in our sadness. So now as we begin this service, we will pray two prayers. Let us pray. Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice and love everything you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let's stand and sing praises to God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see Oh, 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. So that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And now we're going to have the opportunity to remember Fre Freddie through the words of his families and his friends. And so first I invite Marion to come to the, the pulpit to, and, and, and yes, Marion to come to the pulpit and to share memories. and I'm Freddie's niece. Freddie Charles Lubin was born on the 20th of May, 1950, in Nairobi in Kenya, to mum Jermaine and dad Alexander Lubin. Freddie had six siblings, Roy, Margaret, also known as Nellie, Herbert, Johnny, Edward, and Doris. He spent his early childhood living in Thika in Kenya, and the last two years of school living in Kalembe in Uganda. Freddie was a very good student and did well in his studies. He spoke many languages, including Seshelwa Creole, Swahili, Kikuyu, and even a bit of Gujarati. Freddie moved to England when he was 18. His mum sent him away with money to buy a winter coat, but instead he used the money to buy his real first guitar. Uh, Freddie met Lynette whilst acting as wingman for his best friend, Rodney, who was at the time dating Lynette's sister, Cressy. Freddie and Lynette hit it off and married in 1980. They, they later had their children, Ryan and Jade, and their family was complete. They enjoyed many holidays together with family and friends. Freddie was a great father and a dedicated husband. He and Lynette looked perfect together and made marriage look so effortless. They would have celebrated nearly 43 years of marriage this year, which is quite an achievement considering that there are shorter life prison sentences. One of Freddie's early jobs was at an electronics company in Stanmore, where he made TV and radio circuit boards. Due to his natural talent, he went on to complete an apprenticeship at Westminster College, 
and then continued his electronics career as a contractor. Later on, Freddie worked at the Home Office, Scientific and Research Development Branch in St Albans, for 23 years, where he spent the majority of his career. Here, he made many friends and was even responsible for creating the motorised curtains that Princess Anne opened to reveal a new plaque, whilst his family watched with bated breath, fearing a malfunction. <laughs> Freddie left the Home Office in 2010 and did various contracting jobs in electronics. Before starting work at TFL in Acton, he loved this job. <laughs> I'll hold it, it's okay. He loved his job, but sadly it was his last due to his failing health. Fortunately, he was here during the COVID pandemic and his boss and other work colleagues were extremely accommodating, allowing him to shield and return when he re felt he was ready. Freddie worked here right up until July 2020, 2022, when he retired. He was so chuffed at his retirement due that he was showing off his card and group photo taken with his colleagues, some of whom are here today. Freddie would light up a room as soon as he entered it. He had celebrity presence. His trademark moustache and curly locks meant he resembled a rock star. In fact, during my younger years, my siblings and I thought our uncle was Lionel Richie. <laughs> he played on this, wearing that infamous Lionel Rich Tea Biscuit T-shirt to parties. Sean remembers how he even received a birthday CD from Freddie signed, Love Lionel. Freddie did get to see Lionel in concert. Lynette recalls that the resemblance was so uncanny that even the stewards and ushers did a double take as he walked past them at the venue. Freddie had a great sense of humour, and there was never a dull moment with him. He would willingly take part in all the family fun and games and do crazy pass-the-parcel forfeits. He was very competitive and always embraced the various fancy dress theme parties. The last family game he participated in was Name That Tune at his sister-in-law Jenny's party in January 2023, which, of course, he won. He was the life and soul of family parties and would always be found in the middle of the dance floor doing the traditional Seychellois Sega dance, no matter what genre of music was playing. He was cool, fun-loving, entertaining and playful, and many younger members of the family remember him for his awesome Donald Duck impression, which never failed to make them laugh. He was also the family guitarist, regularly serenading us at parties and always led the happy birthday song, trying to keep us in tune and in time. 2020 was to be a landmark year with big family birthdays and celebrations. He had a great time celebrating his son Ryan's wedding to Krishma in March of 2020, dancing and drinking Jaeger bombs and encouraging others to do shots with him. A week later, the UK went into lockdown Freddie was looking forward to his big 70th birthday party in May 2020, which unfortunately couldn't happen, and which many of you would have been attending. Freddie was an excellent problem solver. He was straight talking and was someone you would go to for advice. He was clear headed and decisive, and definitely the person you'd want in an emergency. His niece, Lucia, recalls how following a power cut, she couldn't stop the burglar alarm she was going crazy with the siren blasting in her ears and she phoned Freddie, who calmly talked her through how to reset it. He was always willing to help others, day or night and at a moment's notice. Freddie was a fantastic cook and his Sichelois onion salad is now replicated by some of his family members. He was famous internationally for his mutton curry. The last lucky people to enjoy it were his friends Melita and Selwyn, who were visiting from Australia. As a surprise, he cooked it specifically for them, knowing they loved it. His niece, Hayley, once tried to coax the recipe out of him, but he'd never reveal it. He loved hosting barbecues in his back garden and is remembered for his kind hospitality and skills at the grill. Looking back at photos of Freddy, it seems he was happiest holding either a guitar beer, 
or a class whiskey, as he would describe it. Freddie also loved a glass of red, red wine. He did like that song too. This leads me on to the main thing that people will remember Freddie for, his complete love of music. He taught himself to play the guitar and later the bass and even produced his own album, one song of which you will hear later. Freddie played in numerous bands over the years, but he then formed his own band called Mustang. Freddie would spend hours each day in his music room, practicing alone or with the band and playing gigs most weekends. Many of you are here today because you met Freddie through the music scene. Within the kind messages received by the family after Freddie's passing, many of them make reference to what a talented musician he was. In his later life, Freddie's interest in classic cars was renewed. After 20 years of looking, he finally purchased a lovely racing green-colored Zephyr, which was his pride and joy. With the help of his brother, Johnny, at his garage, he did the car up and then enjoyed taking it to classic car shows and driving it around in the summer. Sadly, in 2016, Freddie was diagnosed with a condition called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which causes scarring of the lungs. This leads to coughing and breathlessness. There is currently no cure for this disease, which gets progressively worse. Despite this, Freddie pushed himself and just got on with it. He got to enjoy many cruises and outings with his family and friends. Until the very end, he remained positive and in high spirits. Despite being so breathless, he could barely talk or eat. Since the news of Freddie's passing, the family have been overwhelmed by the wonderful messages from his family and friends and have welcomed anecdotes and memories of Freddie. The common theme in all of them was how kind and helpful Freddie truly was and that he would always make time to help you, no matter how big or small your problem. His family describe him as an awful businessman. As you may or may not know, Freddie also installed burglar alarms, satellite TV systems, and CCTV cameras. He would have sorted that microphone, that's for sure. <laughs> he would often do odd jobs for his customers out of kindness of his heart, rather than taking payment. The family would like to thank you all for your kind words, messages, and amazing tributes. We also thank each and every one of you for taking the time to pay your respects today, either in person or by watching online. We find comfort in reading your stories and thank you for sharing your pictures. Each of us will have a special memory of Freddie, and as we say goodbye to him, we do so in the knowledge that he brought us great joy and happiness. We were all blessed to have known him. Freddie, there's a special place for you in God's garden, right next to the other music icons, including one of your favorites, Jimi Hendrix. Well, hopefully he's up there too. Freddie, you are our rock star, a true friend, and a family legend. Our sad loss on earth is heaven's gain, and we will miss you so much. May you rest in peace. the immediate family. Morning everyone. I'm Simone, Uncle Freddie's God, uh, goddaughter. Poem, My Brother Freddie, written by his sister Margaret, also known as Nellie. Those you love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. And those special memories of you will always bring a smile to me. If only I could have you back for a little while, then we could sit and talk like we used to do. You always meant so much to me. Your loving sister, Nellie. A letter from Doris, Freddie's sister. 
Freddy, my heart is with great pain that I didn't get a chance to say goodbye in person, but I know you are now at peace and suffering no more. Being the last two youngest Lubin children, we grew up together and shared so many wonderful memories. There are so many highlights from our childhood. For example, walking three miles to school every day, sharing jokes and getting up to mischief. <coughs> the laughter playing along the way in the African village with the little totos eating ugali, matake, and all the African dishes. Apologies if I've pronounced those wrongs, by the way. Mm -hmm. We used to run around everywhere. I remember when you kept teasing our dog Sandy by pegging his tail with a peg. Then, one day, Sandy taught you a lesson, pinned you down and barked at you. Mum had come to rescue you, and she was in fits. We confided in and comforted each other. <coughs> During those days, Mum and Dad could not afford to buy you a guitar, but you did not give up on your dreams of being a musician. You made your first guitar out of a pineapple can, and Uncle Des showed you how to play whenever he visited. I got married and moved to Columbi Mines. You then came to live with me and went to school. I have happy memories <coughs> in Columbi. I left for England and once I settled, got mum to send you over. You lived and worked with me until you married Lynette. I remember one Christmas work party, you got really tipsy. And when you got home, you told us, I can't take this. The ceiling of my head is spinning round and round. Again, Mum laughed and said, that will teach you for drinking too much. The dominoes sessions every Sunday in Hunter's Grove during family gatherings were the highlights. Of course, I then migrated to Australia and was fortunate to visit London from time to time. I was so happy when you and Edward came for a visit to Perth in 2018. Boy, did we have a great time, taking you both to all the country music clubs. I told the clubs how great you were and they let you play and sing with the bands. Everyone loved you and wanted more, but your visit was too short. After you left, a few bands were ringing me and asking for you to come and play in their bands with them. From morning to dusk, we were gallivanting everywhere. We went to the Crown's Casino to celebrate your birthday and Mother's Day. On the last day, we went from the jam session to Brumbies and an Anglo-Indian club, all in one day, where you sang and left an impression in all the clubs. And by 9pm, we drove you to the airport. You were so well loved here in Perth, Freddie, by everyone who met you and heard you perform. The children helped in organising trips. They grew up with you around, so we'll miss you heaps. Rest in peace, my dearest brother. My heart bleeds not having the chance to see you one more time. But we did share messages every day and thank you for sending me a big love heart on Sunday night. Your way of saying goodbye. I love you, Freddie. Rest in peace. I know Mum, Dad and Roy will be looking after you and you're not suffering anymore. You were such a beautiful person, inside and out. Kind, considerate, generous, a wonderful husband, dad and brother. We're all going to miss you heaps. You have left a void in our hearts. Unfortunately, due to my health, I cannot travel, but I'm here in spirit today. Goodbye, my dear brother, till we meet again. Your loving sister, Doris, Valerie, Don, Jacqueline, and all the grandkids. Letter to Freddie, written by his brother, Edward. Freddie, I have so many wonderful memories of you. Like the time when I came from the Seychelles with Johnny and Herbert, and our mum let them go to work, but she made us go to school. We spent many a day together, often playing marbles or hanging out. Then, when we came to England, we rented a room together at Kenton in a Portuguese couple's house. One day, we went out shopping and passed a guitar shop and decided to go in and buy a guitar each. We practiced each evening, and as we worked in an electronics company, we decided to build an amplifier together. And we must have rocked because we blew the speaker up. I didn't carry on with the guitar, 
but you went on to be a great guitarist and singer with your band, entertaining so many people over the years. I have so many memories of our family getting together at your house with Lynette, Ryan and Jade, the barbecues, parties, meals in and out. I would stay with my sister Nellie and her husband Len, and it would give me the opportunity to see my brothers Johnny, Herbert and their families. In more recent years, spending time on holidays and Nellie making an amazing trip possible for us to go together to Australia to see Doris and family, and Doris taking us to see Uncle Des and Uncle Manuel. Doris and all the family were so good to us. Freddie, you will always be in my heart, and I will miss you so much. Your brother, Edward. A few words about my dad, written by his daughter, Jade. Unlike friends and partners, you can't pick your parents. So I was incredibly fortunate to have my dad as my dad. He was always so kind, caring, helpful, and always there for me when I needed him. I took after him in more ways than I did with my mum. For example, his fearlessness, dancing ability, and love of music. He taught me how to drive in his awful bright green Rover 100, and told me that when I was 25, he would stop paying for my car insurance, even though he knew I was already 26. <laughs> I remember him for his stubbornness, like when he would completely ignore the sat-nav directions because he thought he knew better and would end up stuck in traffic. People would ask me why I support Tottenham Hotspur, and the only answer I could give was because my dad supports them. I will miss every time I would come home to see him, and I would greet him by saying, you're out, Freddie, in an awful Scottish accent, although that was quite Wigan, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> And I would greet him by saying, or he would sort of reply, sorry, you're out, JD, in an equally worse one. Not sure when or why we started doing that, but that was our little routine. I will miss his random purchases from Wish.com and our jam sessions in the music room when I was learning guitar and only knew three chords. I now know about 10. I will miss sending each other cute cat pictures on WhatsApp and the fact that even after seven years, he'd call my cat by the name Putsi instead of his actual name, which is Pushkin. I will also miss his horrendous jokes, especially the ones he couldn't finish because he was laughing so hard whilst telling them. My dad took great interest in my job, and I knew he was proud of me, as I am of him. I should have been uh, planning his birthday party with him, but sadly instead I've helped to plan his funeral. There was no one less deserving of a lung disease than him, and I'm very sad to have seen him suffer. I remember feeling completely helpless at the point that I knew there was nothing I could do to stop his lungs from getting worse, and all I could do now was spend quality time with him and make some more memories. I mean, what 34-year-old enjoys going on a cruise with their parents? Well, I actually did, and I'm glad we went on one last year because that was our last holiday together and it meant a lot to me. One thing I didn't get from my dad was his zest for life. His outlook was incredibly positive, despite his illness, and we all felt that he had so much more left to do with his time here on Earth. He left the world a week before we were able take, to take him to see his beloved Tottenham Hotspur to play Nottingham Forest at White Hart Lane, but he must have been watching it from heaven because Spurs won 3-1 that day. Dad, I have so many great memories of you, and whenever I'm sad that you're gone, I will think of those. Thank you for being the best, I love you, and I will miss you so much. Love Jade and Pootsie a.k.a. Pushkin. <clears throat> a few words about Freddy, written by his wife, Lynette. I won the lottery the day I met Freddy. I was 16 years old. Two, two years later, we got married after buying our first home. We were blessed with two wonderful children, Ryan and Jade, who continued to make us proud. In Freddie's arms, I felt safe and loved. He was strong, dependable, kind, caring, thoughtful, the list goes on. After God is Freddie, as my sister once said. There wasn't anything he couldn't do, and if there was, he would learn how to do it. He thought he was invincible. 
On holiday in the Seychelles some years ago, I told him I was, he was not to go into the sea after a shark attack had been reported there. He confidently replied that he could fight any shark and win. He was fearless and calm in stressful situations. I too thought he was invincible, but after a gallant fight with this cruel lung disease, which beat him in the end. I'm so very sorry and sad that we never had time to enjoy our retirement together and for Freddie to do the things he'd planned to do. His music, recording, tinkering with his beloved green vintage Zephyr, which we can see outside today, and many more cruises. Freddie, my sweet, you are my rock and my world. I feel so empty without you, and I do not look forward to a life without you by my side. I would give anything to hear your bad jokes, the ones I laughed at because of the way you told them, sometimes, often, killing the punchline. It was painful watching you suffer, especially over the past year, and more so at the end. You bore your suffering so bravely, without complaint, so as not to upset me and the others. Now you can rock with the angels until we are together again. You are always on my mind, my endless love. Just have a moment. I've received one other very short letter from Johnny, and I will read it. My dearest Freddie, when you sadly passed away, it really broke my heart. My days are filled with sadness now that you are no longer here. You were someone very special who was loved in every way. I miss you more than words can say. Your loving brother, Johnny. Now I have the impossible job of rounding this up. We have heard, we've felt, we've shared the love. We've had a glimpse of the joy that was shared through Freddie's life. Not much more I either can say or should say. And so what I will say is very short. There's two, two things that came to my mind as I was listening to the various tributes. One is something which I don't always but quite often share with families. That at a time like this, there are two possible ways forward. One is to drive a stake in the sand and say we will not go past this place and spend the rest of the, your lives being bitter because of what has been taken away from you. The alternative is to kick that stake and throw it as far as you can and keep on going, being better people because of the love that you had and the example that you received. Ryan, Jade, Lynette, I'm confident and hopeful that you will become better people every day because of the love that you received from your husband and your dad. And remember that when the times are hard, we are all here around you. And then the last thing, I will say the second one. Whenever I'm short of something to say, I remember what my dad used to say. He was a man of very few words, but what he did say, the normally hit the spot. Whenever he attended a funeral like this, he would always, he's a, he's a Yorkshireman, so my accent may be okay, because I've still got it a bit, you probably noticed. He used to come out and say, lad, they always take best ones first. They take the best ones first. 
Freddy, you are one of the best. May God receive you as one of the first. May you rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. And now at the family's request, we will celebrate a very simple and a very short uh, Eucharist. We will um, say some uh, introductory prayers, and then I will invite you to come to the step of the sanctuary to receive the Eucharist. And so, as you know, if we come to take the Eucharist, we must come with clean hearts, having confessed our sins. And so, I will say a prayer of confession. I invite you to conclude with Amen. And then I will say, I invite you to repeat the Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Some words of comfort from our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, come to me, all the travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus had supper with his friends and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was ended, he, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, and he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now as we celebrate his death and celebrate his rising in glory, we pray that you will send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and the blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. And though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. In a moment, I'll invite you to come and receive the Eucharist in the form of the, the bread, the wafer, intincted with the Eucharistic wine in the sign of the cross. And so we will share 
the body and blood of Christ through the wafer. And I invite you to approach the step of the sanctuary on the roadside of Freddy and then pass back on the other side. The table is open to all. If you receive the Eucharist in your home church and would choose to receive it today, you are welcome to the step of the sanctuary at All Saints. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and the blood which he shed for you. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us and strengthen us in the power of your Spirit to live and work to God's praise and glory. Amen. And now we will say our prayers where we remember and give thanks for the life and example of Freddie. There are four prayers at the end of each. I will conclude with Lord in your mercy. And I invite you to respond with the simple words, hear our prayer. And then we will conclude by saying together the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Let us pray. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Freddy, for the grace and mercy he received from you, for all that was good in his life, for the memories that we treasure today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you promised eternal life to those who believe Remember for good this your servant Freddy, as we also remember him. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. We pray now that you will look in mercy on Lynette and Jade, Ryan, and all of their family and Freddie's family, and all of us in our sadness. Lord, give us all patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen us with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, you're tender towards your children and your mercy is over all your works. 
Heal the memories of hurt and failure. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. To turn to Christ and follow in his ways, in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy and trusting into your hands all that you have made and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make these our prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And I invite you to stand and sing, How Great Thou Art. Sings my soul, my Savior God. 
please be seated just for a second. We are almost at the conclusion of our time in church. Literally, we're almost at the conclusion of our time in church because we move next to Breakspear for the final part of the service where we will say a final farewell to Freddie. Uh, we're very flexible about time at All Saints, but they're not so flexible at Breakspear. So I would ask that when we leave church, we go quite reverently but reasonably quickly to our cars. And if you're joining us at Breakspear, the um, final committal will be at 11.45, and everyone is welcome. And then, of course, uh, Lynette and the family invite you to join for a chance to remember and give thanks and share stories about Freddie, and the details are in the order of service of where to go to for both of those things. I want to thank you all for being here. In particular, Franz, thank you for enriching our worship so wonderfully. And just to let you know, we have a vacancy at the moment for exactly that spot. You've passed the interview. If you see the church wardens as you leave, uh, they will be very, very happy to conclude the details. Franz, thank you. And any time you're free, please do come and join us for our worship. And the same goes for you all. It's wonderful to welcome you to All Saints. This is a church for everybody. Uh, we don't take a collection at the moment, but there are plates at the back. If you would like to give anything to sustain the ministry of the church here at All Saints, your donations will be really gratefully received. Now we conclude by commending Freddie to God's safekeeping. So please stand. Now let us commend Freddie to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Freddie to your mercy. In the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. The service at Breakspear will be very short and simple and it will include sprinkling the coffin of Freddie with holy water as we give our final farewell. And now may the peace the grace and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with those of you who are here and with all those who you love today and every day. Amen.
Thank you.